So across the period of Ghiberti's life, there are huge changes in aesthetics and he's not separate from those. So if we look more closely at his earliest surviving work, the competition panel for the Northern Doors of the Baptistry, um, he will, I think we can see that he's borrowing, even at this stage, very early on, he's borrowing different sets of ideas, different types of aesthetics and trying to meld them together. So if you look at say uh, the uh, figure of Abraham here, and uh, kind of the way, the posture of his body and his head, uh, this kind of slight exaggeration of the kind of the curve and the motion of his body, this love of the drapery, being able to show the folds of the drapery as they run down here, the fringing on his drape on his clothing as well. It's very much coming from an international Gothic tradition, the kind of what was um, the established style uh, when Ghiberti starts to work. However, the figure of Isaac on the side uh, with his knife coming towards his throat, the angel swoops in, is highly classicizing. Uh, that it's focusing on the anatomy of the body, the proportions of the body. Uh, you can look at the musculature across his neck and shoulders, down to his arms, across his pecs, down through his abdomen, down through his legs, to his knees. He's been working from both uh, sarcophagus sculptures, Roman sarcophagus sculptures, to understand Roman ideas of anatomy. But we think also he's been looking at actual bodies uh, to understand how the body moves in different postures. So you have this kind of classicizing drive and this Gothicizing drive simultaneously in the same sculpture. What we know from what he would write about modern art and what makes modern art different from Greek art. Um, so he calls old art is Greek art, it's Byzantine influenced, whereas modern art is from Giotto onwards and it's much more about uh, working from nature. And we see from in the commentaries that he writes about uh, the, um, there's this contrast between Greek as fake and modern as natural but that he sees you don't just work from nature, it's not just looking, observation of the real world, observation of the classics is just a step. And you need to then apply your own genius to that, to improve upon nature, to understand the principles of nature, only to make things better than nature. Uh, so it's this idea of nature plus genius equals art. If you compare what he's doing to, with uh, Brunelleschi's work, the other surviving panel, uh, Brunelleschi too has the highly classicizing elements such as the figure over here. This is the spinario, the Roman sculpture of a boy, a fisherman pulling a spine out of his foot. Um, and you've got kind of to balance that off. He's just showing off, look what I can do with proportion. Look at my understanding of anatomy as, as the kind of a, a, a guy bending over to do up his shoe. And this really awkward position that he's showing off. Um, in terms of the action, he's kind of accelerated the action. So you look at the knife is coming right down onto Isaac's throat at the angels, still grabbing Abraham's hand to rip it away, saying kind of, I was, I was just joking. Um, you didn't have to do that. Um, I know I told you to, but uh, don't. And we, I think we start looking at them though, although there are these kind of very classicizing elements in it, and there is this sense of kind of energy by that uh, caught in that action. Um, there's, I think, hmm, reasons that are both aesthetic and practical for why, um, the guild who was in, responsible for deciding uh, went with Ghiberti. In terms of composition, uh, this is quite straightforward and becomes kind of a basic Renaissance composition where you've got this kind of triangle that helps balance, it provides a base and then runs up through the figures to create kind of this triangular shape as a way of weighting and balancing the composition. That becomes kind of the standard thing used by painters right throughout the 15th century in Florence. Whereas Ghiberti has a more subtle way of doing that. If you look at the way the drapery and the rock down the bottom uh, extends out uh, and that runs across to the donkey on the left, but that actually gives us uh, this platform uh, to, uh, to build. Um, this looks actually quite static. The composition, the triangle, one of the difficulties of using a triangle is it does make things seem still, quiet and static. Whereas Ghiberti is aiming for dynamism in a different way. If you look once having he's created this plinth, created the weight at the lower end of the foreground, the lower end of the, the panel, uh, he then moves diagonally up through the rock to the Lamb of God up this way, uh, which kind of he's making our eye move in different directions. We then kind of from there move across to see the angels swooping in, the angel's hand appearing, I have a hand moving that way, an arm moving that way back down to this moment, and a body that then leads us, linking the angel to the ground here. So it's a much more dynamic composition and that kind of dynamism in the comp composition is something that he's, he's getting, I think, mostly from an international Gothic tradition, whereas Brunelleschi is moving towards kind of a quiet, static 
way of looking at things, a quiet kind of a balanced, proportional, everything is, has, is symmetrical. So the angel is balanced by the tree, the lamb here is balanced by Abraham, uh, the spinario here is balanced by the soldier over there. Everything, there's a symmetry that runs through it. Ghiberti is much more, I think, dynamic. These figures do visually balance off with the pair of figures over here. The lamb balances with the angel, but the lamb also balances diagonally that way. Uh, and the angel kind of helps move, create a diagonal across here. So it's a much more dynamic composition than Brunelleschi's. The other reason why he is awarded the panel is that he's um, as, as blunt as we can be, um, he's actually a very good bronze caster, whereas Brunelleschi is not. So Brunelleschi's panel is composed by taking multiple, having to make multiple different casts of each of these different pieces. So there's a, a relief cast that's made, and then he has to attach all of these other bits of bronze to that, which causes two problems. First of all, it uses much, much more bronze to be able to create this flat, solid bit and, and stick it on like bits of Lego. Um, and secondly, it's much less durable. Wherever there's a join, there's the, it increases the damage over time. Um, so he uses about a third more bronze than, than Ghiberti uses. Um, and it, will, it won't be as durable as Ghiberti's work. So there's a sense here that kind of Ghiberti is aesthetically more interesting, uh, more dynamic, um, but that he's also much, much cheaper. It's gonna cost them 30% less in material costs. And in the case of bronze, that's substantial because bronze is far and away the most expensive material uh, to be using, except for gold, and these would be gilded anyway. Uh, so Ghiberti is cheaper and better than Brunelleschi.